What is going on guys, Will here, welcome to the video. Today is gonna to be my first ever 30K attempt. You know, I'm excited but mostly nervous and... I'm back. Daddy? Son, I'm here to support you on your big day. Remember, clear eyes, full hearts. Can't lose! What is going on guys, Will here, welcome to the video. You know, early on in my career I was a tight end, but that didn't last once I had my first Chipotle burrito. From there I tried all sorts of positions and then decided to go back to playing football. I soon found a passion for taking it long, became a wide receiver and never looked back. Obviously I didn't make it pro, but today we're gonna live out some of those football fantasies in real life, starting off with a breakfast of champions. We are making Vaughn Miller's staple in-season breakfast. He is the linebacker for the Denver Broncos, drafted second overall in 2011, Super Bowl MVP in 2016, and he loves breakfast. He cannot start his day without it. He's up at 7.30, he's having breakfast by 7.40, and it's always cage-free eggs. I also have a specific appetite in the morning. So we are having four cage-free eggs with five slices of turkey bacon, cold pressed juice, and then it said fruit. And when fruit is open to interpretation, of course you go with pineapple, it's just the fruit that keeps on giving. Of course, we gotta start off with the cage free eggs. So this guy loves eggs so much. He actually has his own chicken farm with 60 birds. So almost as many chicks as John Mayer. Tastes like that bird was roaming around freely. Now let's get into the turkey bacon. So he loves chickens. Turkeys, not such a lucky bird. They're turned into bacon. Unpopular opinion. I like turkey bacon way better than regular bacon. High in protein, low calorie, and has a hint of that porkiness that I desire. Okay, so let's crack open this cold pressed juice. So it's called the bloody beet. I originally mistaken it for the bloody meat and gave me chilling flashbacks to December 1st. So the ingredients are beetroot, kale, parsley, spinach, apple, carrot, lemon, cucumber, and ginger, 110 calories for the entire thing. This was almost $16. So you probably need an NFL salary just to afford this. It has a sweetness. It has also an earthiness that I'm not fond of. And there's a nice little spiciness to it, which I'm assuming is the ginger, but this is actually really, really good. Would I pay $16 again? Heck no. Ooh. That yolk is a little underdone, just burst in your mouth. Usually get a little bit of a warning. Wow. All right guys, well that is gonna wrap up breakfast. Delicious, nutritious, and simple. Just what I needed, because now we're gonna go do some combine events. So the first combine test we are gonna do is the 225 bench press rep out. So Steven Paya has the record right now. He did it back in 2011 with 49 reps. He is also 300 pounds. I am right now just under 180 pounds. Hoping to at least hit the age of consent with a solid 16 reps. We will see, 16 is my goal, and uh, let's get after it. I look incredibly natural in this jersey, by the way. on the bar, 15, 16 reps is the goal. We'll see. Sixteen reps there. I feel like because I said sixteen, that's where I ended. But overall, very happy with that. Let's move on to test number two. So next up, we are going to do the forty-yard dash. So the record is with John Ross at four point two two seconds. Tom Brady with a little bit longer of a time at five point two eight seconds. I'm usually pretty good short bursts, just not with running. So we'll see how I do. It's super, super cold outside. Uh, so we're going to warm up and then see what time I can get. So we are all warmed up and ready to go. So we're gonna be starting at the 20 yard line here since this is all covered with snow. And we're gonna be running to the second 50 yard line. I have a, a, a little bucket there to give me a little range and we'll see how I do here. Just 
just got 6.39 seconds there. Obviously having to start the Apple Watch and stop it would obviously influence the time a little bit, but certainly PR elsewhere. I mean, overall I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not a runner and my knee's decently bad, so I'll take it. So now we have to go home and do one more test. The last test we are gonna do is a written test on the computer called the Wonderlick test. So it's a test to measure cognitive ability. In general, the quarterbacks will score higher and usually a team wants them to get at least a 21. The lowest score in the NFL was a four by Morris Claiborne, but he was still drafted six overall. So no matter the result, you still got some hope. So I'm gonna see what I can do. It, you have 12 minutes to do it. And uh, you know, tests are not my strong suit, but we'll give it our best shot. So it looks like I got an 18, which I guess is not that bad. Only made it to question number 30 of the 50. You only had 12 minutes to do it. And the wording of some of the questions, I was just staring at them like, like I had no idea what was going on. But what does that even mean? So looking at this chart right here, so but if your score is between 11 and 20, you have a 25% chance of getting a job offer, which is um, quite discouraging. But on that note, let's go make some lunch. Looks like I just uh, stole a white girl's lunch in California with this Abuda Power Bowl situation, but it's actually Tom Brady's staple lunch. So a lot of people know that he has quite the diet. It's very strict, you know, local, organic, mostly plant-based, anti-inflammatory. So let's dive in right now to the star of the show, which is, I'd say probably the quinoa, which looks kind of like an adhesive. Oh, luckily he drinks lots of water. He's known for drinking lots of water and I can, and kind of see why. I feel like a damn rabbit. <clears throat> All right, guys, so that is gonna wrap up the lunch. Working on that dry bed of kale gave me like a similar feeling as I get walking into a Panera bread, which is miserable. So I'm gonna sit and chill for a bit because I feel like this is gonna act kind of like a like an enema. You know what I mean? It's gonna be a nice fluid experience, and then get on to the main workout of the day. So you guys must be thinking for the workout, we're gonna do some deadlifts or some heavy compound lifts, but no, we're actually doing some ballet because a lot of players have been using classical dance to improve themselves in the field, most notably Hall of Famers Lynn Swan and Herschel Walker, and most recently, Rob Gronkowski. So we're gonna be doing a barre class, which is a very popular kind of a group fitness class with ballet in mind, and whenever I do a workout in this area, I get my ass kicked, and this one certainly looks the toughest, so we'll see if I can survive it. One, two, three, four, five, I never realized how important I am until now. Alright guys, well that is going to wrap up the workout. So a lot less cardiovascularly demanding than I thought it was going to be. And I was kind of wondering why football players even do ballet in the first place. But after doing that workout, I can totally see why. Because the whole entire time, 
you're pretty much in this like unnatural compromised position that you can get pushed over at any time, especially when you're a football player running all these crazy routes. You're going to be quite often in these unnormal positions. So being able to work on your stabilization muscles is key and this workout lets you do that. So when I think of football, I think of the Super Bowl and when I think of Super Bowl, I think of snacks. So I'm going to go upstairs right now and show you guys how to make some healthy Super Bowl recipes. So sticking to your calories and your macros during the Super Bowl is just, it's not gonna happen. So hopefully with these recipes can help minimize the damage. So today we're gonna be making two Super Bowl party snack juggernauts, starting off with a spinach artichoke dip. So the first thing you are gonna need is one cup of Greek yogurt, pretty much the anabolic Rosetta Stone. You're gonna need one cup of some shredded fat-free or just low-fat mozzarella cheese, two cloves of garlic, one entire 14 ounce can of artichoke hearts that we're gonna dice up into bite-sized pieces, 10 ounces of frozen spinach that I let thaw out earlier this morning, and then one third cup of Parmesan cheese, and last but not least, a little sprinkle of salt. We're gonna mix it all together, put it into this little nice beautiful ramekin thing here, into the oven 350 degrees, 20 to 22 minutes, and of course we're gonna make some homemade pita chips on the side. Okay, so we're gonna add 233 grams of our Greek yogurt to our spinach. Now we're just gonna add our mozzarella cheese, just save a little bit for the top to sprinkle. And now we're gonna dice up our artichoke hearts and our garlic cloves. Good, now just a little sprinkle of salt, nothing crazy. But you guys know me, it's usually pretty crazy. Good. And the reason why you don't add so much salt is because Parmesan cheese is a very salty cheese on its own. So now we're gonna go with a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese and that is it. So we're just gonna mix it all up, put it into our ramekin, top it off with the last bit of cheese and then into the oven, like I said, for 20 to 25 minutes. So as you guys can see, it's starting to resemble the real thing, just not with the fat, not with all that stuff you don't want, just tons of protein and just tons of gains and you're gonna be the fan favorite at the party. Just gonna fill it up nicely. And now it's oven time. Good. And now it's time to make the homemade pita chips. So I just got these whole wheat pitas that I found at the grocery store, the lowest calorie ones I could find. So you're gonna take around three or four out and cut them into eights. So don't worry about running out of pita chips because I can think of many ways to finish off that spread by the end of the night. The pitas are cut up, so now it's time to add the olive oil to the bowl. So we're only going with two tablespoons, so not a whole lot for the amount of pita chips that we got. Good, so now we are gonna add in our pita chips. So dump it right in. And now it's time to season them up. So again, generous amount of salt. The salty, the better, good. A nice around half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of garlic powder. Get as garlicky as you want with it. And then now you can kind of customize it however you want. So use any sort of dry herb that you like. So I like rosemary, feel free to use thyme, basil, so whatever you want to do that day. So again, around a teaspoon of some dried rosemary. All right, good. So now we're gonna pour it onto our pan that I put with parchment paper. Good, now we're just gonna lie them flat. And there we go. So it's gonna go into the oven 350 degrees, just like the dip. And you just gotta watch until it gets nice and golden brown. Good. Pitas are in the oven, the dip's in the oven, so now it's time to move on to dish number two. So nothing's gonna upset your boys more than biting into what they thought was a chicken wing only to find out it's a vegetable. It's like coming back from Columbia with baking powder, you know? So this recipe, we're gonna be making some cauliflower buffalo wings. Uh, they're not as meaty but they sure do the trick. So what you're gonna need is one whole head of cauliflower and one egg, and then we're gonna make the batter in just a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna be breaking these up into small pieces, just enough to like have a bite-sized piece. All right, so the cauliflower is chopped, now it's time to add it to our Ziploc bag here. There we go. So now I'm gonna add my one egg that I whisked earlier into the cauliflower. All right, so the cauliflower is coated with the eggs, so now it's time to make the little breadcrumb mixture. So I have some almond flour here. I'm gonna go with one cup. I'm gonna give it a little pinch of salt. Perfect. And now equal parts garlic powder and onion powder. So I usually go with a teaspoon of each. One. And that's it. So this is gonna go right into our Ziploc bag with the cauliflower and the egg. All right, so the cauliflower is coated. Now we're gonna add it to our pan. And again, just like the pitas, you wanna evenly kind of spread it out. And there we go. So we're gonna place it into the oven right here, 425 degrees, 25 to 30 minutes. Just keep on watching it so it doesn't burn. Good, so now it's time to make the homemade buffalo sauce to go with the cauliflower. You guys should smell it in here. It smells divine. Take a look at those pita chips, nice and crispy. 
knock 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 who's there so now it's time to move on to the buffalo wing sauce so buffalo wing sauce is pretty much hot sauce with half the butter so we don't want to do that way too many calories so this is a homemade version i came up with myself that is pretty damn good so we're starting off with one cup of just traditional frank's red hot sauce which sounds like a lot i know like 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 yeah now we're going in with half a cup of some low sodium chicken stock just helps add some volume to our sauce and now a quarter of a cup of some white vinegar and really with anything wings related garlic powder and onion powder is always close by so around half a teaspoon per each one and now it's time for the last ingredient so instead of butter we're going to be adding a raw nut which is the cashew just adds an unsurprising creaminess to it. In, and that's it. So now we're just gonna blend it all up. All right, so I think the sauce is done. Yes, it is. And come and take a look at this. Nice and thick. So the cashews don't really get all clumpy. They actually smooth up really, really nicely. So we're just gonna wait for the cauliflower to finish. Then we're gonna toss them in it and then put it back into the oven at a broil for five minutes. And take a look at that. Like, come on. You cannot beat that. This is probably one of my better recipes I've ever made. So I'm gonna let that sit and cool with the pita chips. So now I'm gonna take the cauliflower out. It's been around 22 minutes. Yeah, it's been nice and golden brown. So what I'm gonna do is add it to this big bowl here. Perfect. And now I'm gonna add around half of the sauce that I made. Completely cover it. Good, now we're just gonna give it a nice little toss. Good, so now it's gonna go back onto my pan. There we go, and I'm gonna change my oven now to broil, and we're gonna let it broil for five minutes and take them out and they're perfectly done. Good, now we're just gonna change it to maxi broil. Five minutes and then Super Bowl treats are served. Take a look at that. That's pretty spectacular. A nice gourmet Super Bowl feast. So obviously to go with the snacks, you need to have a drink. So if you're a beer enthusiast, I suggest you look away very, very quickly. Because for me, you know, it's not so much about the alcohol or the beer. It's just about having something to drink with your friends. And alcohol calories add up pretty fast. Now we all have our methods to last longer, whether that be thinking a grandma, re reciting sports stats, or, you know, just focusing on your breath. But when it comes to alcohol, a great thing is some club soda. So we're gonna make some sort of like a Rattler situation, turning one beer into two. So I'm gonna go in with half of a lime. So I already have a cup here full of ice. Go half lime. Good. Now I'm gonna go in half of the can of my Rolling Rock, not sponsored. Good, and now last but not least, half a can of uh, some sparkling water, any flavor that you want, just lime, because lime and lime. There we go. So this is great to go just like that. If you want to spice it up even further, literally, you can actually add some chili powder in it. It's actually very, very good. But this is just a nice refreshing drink. Very low calories. Makes one again into two to go along with your snacks. Oh yeah, baby. This is so good. I have a whole one later. So let's get into this uh, buffalo cauliflower bites. The only thing lacking with this thing is some protein, so you might need to add some whey protein to your other powders later this evening. And then dip it into some low calorie creamy Caesar dressing. That does not taste like your average cauliflower. That just tastes like full fat, Super Bowl, chicken bites. Oh yeah, okay. Now let's get into this Spinach dip, so I got my chip here. That's just, that's some good spinach dip, yo. So, you know, it tastes great and I don't feel bad about it. Having stuff like this will make you look like a running back, not like an offensive linesman. So, as always, recipes will be in the description. 
everything you need to do. Let me know if you try them, what you guys think. So that is gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.